For the past few months, I've been collecting as many of the chemical elements as I can. And in this series, I'll be showing you my collection and explaining the science behind these building blocks of the universe. Next up is element number two, helium. Of course, we're all familiar with helium balloons from parties and parade floats. And that time in 1986 when a fundraiser in Cleveland released 1.5 million balloons, and they all flew over Lake Erie, accidentally preventing rescue helicopters from saving some drowning fishermen, and they died. Um, that actually happened. Yeah. Helium is less dense than air, so it floats much like hydrogen does. Unlike hydrogen, however, helium isn't flammable and in fact won't react with other chemicals under normal conditions. This makes helium a bit of a safer choice for, say, a blimp or a zeppelin, something you don't want burning. Helium is part of the group in the periodic table called noble gases. Noble gases like helium have a full shell of electrons and therefore don't tend to form bonds with other atoms. In order to have a sample of helium that lasts longer than a balloon, I've got some helium here that's contained in a glass ampule. There's really not much to see right now, but like we saw with the hydrogen last time, an ampule of low pressure gas can actually glow in a strong electromagnetic field. My helium sample actually glows quite a bit brighter than my hydrogen sample and using a diffraction grating shows the wavelengths even more clearly. In fact, this distinctive spectrum is what led to helium's discovery. In 1868, astronomers Jules Janssen and Norman Lockyer viewed a solar eclipse through a prism and saw a distinctive yellow line, which was later found to be from a previously unknown element. Scientists named this new element helium, after helios, the Greek word for the sun. It's a fitting name, as the sun itself actually creates helium via fusion. Deep down at the center of the sun's core, the pressure is so strong that atoms of hydrogen are literally fused together to form helium. This fusion releases energy. Trillions of these fusions occur every second and create the light and heat that we feel even millions of kilometers away. Helium is the second most abundant element in the universe after hydrogen, making up almost 23% of all known matter. However, here on Earth, Helium is much more rare. Because it is both inert and very light, helium gas tends to float up to the top of the atmosphere, where it is blown away into space by solar winds. So, where does all the helium on Earth come from? Well, it turns out there's more than one way to create helium. Helium can be created by fusing smaller atoms together or by breaking larger ones apart. Inside some common household smoke detectors is a device known as an ionization chamber containing a small amount of radioactive material which ionizes the air and makes it possible to detect smoke particles. At the center of this little metal button is a piece of gold foil 
impregnated with a microscopic amount of the radioactive synthetic isotope americium-241. Americium-241 decays into neptunium-237 by emitting an alpha particle consisting of two protons and two neutrons. Look familiar? That's right, an alpha particle is just the nucleus of a helium atom. These alpha particles are highly charged and dangerously ionizing. However, they don't travel very far and are easily blocked by the plastic shell of the smoke detector. While these particles are far too small to see, we can detect them with a special attachment for the Geiger counter. And if we put the americium in a container full of supersaturated alcohol vapor, we can actually watch as the alpha particles ionize the air. Oh my god. While americium is a good example of an alpha radiation emitter, natural elements like thorium and uranium, buried in rocks deep underground, also undergo alpha decay, creating helium gas. Over millions of years, the helium slowly builds up in pockets of natural gas, which is where we get most of our helium from today. In other words, the helium in this party balloon came from the radioactive decay of heavy elements deep inside the Earth. This also means that helium is a non-renewable resource, and we might just end up running out of it. Which is a shame since helium is useful for a lot more things than just party balloons. Helium has the lowest freezing point of any element and liquid helium is essential for cryogenics, like superconductors and MRI machines. Helium boils at 4.2 degrees Kelvin, under conditions of atmospheric pressure. Helium is a remarkable substance. It has two different and easily distinguishable liquid phases, a warmer and a colder one. But it is helium-2, the colder phase, which is truly different. Because of this, it is called the superfluid. The viscosity of helium-2 in this experiment is so small that it has not been possible to find a value for it. Despite helium's abundance throughout the universe, its scarcity on Earth makes helium a precious and important element. <laughs>